again, everyone. Today we have a special story about different issues concerning the JCPOA and its um, consequences and outcomes on Iran. Uh, we have Mr. Tobias Penick from Germany as the political analyst and activist today in our program. I would like to thank him for accepting our invitation. So Tobias, um, for the first question, do you think these pressures and sanctions by um, U.S. government on Iran were in any way successful, and do you think it had brought Iran to its knees or not? Uh, well, first of all, I think that the United States understands very well that with conventional, with a conventional war, with conventional weapons, it cannot really defeat uh, Iran right now. Because Iran is a very strong country, they have a powerful military, and there is no way to defeat uh, Iran in this way. I think that the U.S. President Trump is very well aware of it, and uh, also his advisors. I think that Trump actually, he has a different mindset. He is an economist. Uh, and he understands that there are different ways of fighting other states. So not only a conventional war, but an economic war. So what we see right now going on against Iran, it's a typical economic war. I think that in some cases, actually, not only the sanctions uh, were successful, but multiple things uh, which the U.S. tried to do against Iran right now. Uh, first of all, I think that the fall of the oil price had a massive influence on the Iranian economy. And uh, of course, the sanctions also play its role in all of this. So we see right now that there is, of course, an inflation in Iran, which can be uh, seen as some kind of successful attack on Iran. I don't think that these uh, sanctions and the uh, low oil price are uh, a cause which will bring down Iran completely, but we see, we're seeing, of course, an economic impact on, the, uh, on Iran and the society. So if you speak to people in Iran, they will complain, of course, about the inflation and economic problems in the country. Uh, we must see that these uh, problems were, of course, caused uh, by the U.S. and uh, foreign powers which are seeking to bring down Iran, of course, also the Zionists. So, of course, in some ways, we see that this, uh, this economic warfare has been in some ways successful, but we also need to see that now we are opening the gates for other possibilities. Iran is not the only country which finds itself under, under economic sanctions. There are so many countries in the world which are right now being fought on, on an economic war. So there's China, Trump's main competitor. Uh, there's Russia, which finds itself already under sanctions for some years right now. Uh, there are countries like Cuba, North Korea, which have been finding themselves under sanctions for so many decades right now. So I think the main thing is right now that we should not focus on the, the sanctions which are imposed right now, but we should focus on establishing trade between countries which find themselves already under these sanctions. So that's an effective way how we can overcome the sanctions. And in the end, uh, actually, the whole war will turn against the U.S. because if you sanction everybody, then you will create an alliance which will go against the U.S. And this could be one of the main possibilities how we can turn the whole war against the U.S. and make the anti-imperial state victorious against, uh, in this war against the U.S. Okay, as you know, Ayatollah Khamenei has said that if Trump and the U.S. wants to get back to the negotiations, they should actually uh, resume their promises in the, uh, in the previous situation of JCPOA, and Trump has to get back to uh, uh, those promises which were made in a uh, 5 plus 1 deal and actually JCPOA that was um, uh, afterward was denied by uh, Trump's administration. Do you think uh, this idea of Ayatollah Khamenei would be effective and what is your opinion about such a decision of Iran's leader? I think it's difficult to say because on one side of course Iran wants to lift the sanctions to uh, actually raise the economy to get back into international trade and so on but on the other side I think it would be also a great thing if Iran maybe in future 
would develop uh, a possibility to defend itself, maybe even in a nuclear way. Why? Because I always think that nuclear weapons are always uh, deterrent weapons. So uh, it's only used for defense. The only country in the world which ever used nuclear weapons to attack another country, it was the United States of America. So, uh, of course, we're seeing right now uh, North Korea, DPRK, developing nuclear weapons. And they are very well aware of it that it means a future... Uh, prevention of any attack on the DPRK by the United States. So, of course, we see. I can see both sides. I can see one side which uh, sees like a uh, lift of the economy and also sees like that there is not even the necessary need of developing nuclear weapons because the capabilities of the Iranian armed forces are so strong that they can uh, win in a conventional war. But on the other side, I always think that uh, to develop a nuclear strength is also a great uh, possibility to counter any, any war which is uh, imposed by the United States on another nation. So I see both sides and it's hard to decide right now uh, which way the Iranian people want to go and should go. So I think it's a question which is more or less up on, up on to the Iranian people, but I think that they should prepare for both possibilities. So uh, it's on one side very good to try to start a dialogue and to re get into international trade, but also it's always uh, important to have a plan B in case this is not successful, just to build up nuclear powers because uh, it is uh, a very important thing to do also for Iran. Um, you perfectly know that so far European Union and European countries didn't perfectly, uh, you know, uh, fulfill their promises based on the deal and based on the JCPOA with Iran. And I would like to know about the reason behind that. How, what do you think uh, such a thing happened? So, first of all, the European Union is always following the global strategy of the United States and NATO powers and so on. So, of course, they will follow uh, the sanctions regime. But, on the other side, I think that there is now, right now, because of uh, the Trump administration, a, a small, very minor rift between European Union and the United States. So, we see that the European Union is, for example, not following all of the sanctions. They are still at some point maybe want to continue some trade with Iran. It's not clear if it will be possible or not, but at least we see some kind of rift between the European Union and the US. So uh, also in Germany we see sometimes that Merkel is not agreeing to 100% with what Trump is saying. I don't think that it will change the general alignment of European Union or Germany, but at least this will create maybe some minor possibilities, uh, some kind uh, of loopholes for Iran to still uh, at least have some basic trade with the European Union countries. And uh, I think that we should really try to use this, this possibility. But in general, I don't think because of the uh, global block alignment that the European Union can do anything else than what NATO countries and the US is uh, doing. So. That's it, basically.